students. Today we are going to make a teapot and the things that you are going to need initially are two bats, a big chunky ball of clay, approximately three pounds or the size of two uh, softballs. You're gonna need a small ball of clay for the lid and you're gonna need your calipers to measure the top of your teapot for your lid. Okay, students, I have here a teapot that I made a couple years ago. This is a nice sized teapot. It holds about four liquid cups of water tea, so it can pour several cups of tea at once. It has an elongated spout that's curved really nicely for pouring. It also has a lid that has a flange built into the lid as well as a flange or gallery here inside the pot. So that way when the lid goes on, it's locked in very securely. So that way when you pour tea, your lid doesn't flip forward, it's really locked in. This is a personal choice, adding two different flanges. Um, it's up to you if you want to do that. Not every potter does that. I also want to show you the straps here on the lid. Um, they're just very decorative, very playful. I kind of wanted to make an arching strap that fit the over the top teapot handle. And I'll show you two different handles for the pot that I'm gonna throw so you can decide which direction you wanna go in. So to make the body of the teapot, I have my ball of clay. Like I said, about the size of two softballs, about three pounds. Make sure it's padded into a nice round ball. I'm gonna snap this down on the potter's wheel. Looks like my bat is a little off center, but that's okay. The bat can be off center as long as your clay is on center. So I'm gonna grab and squeeze. And I'm gonna pull this clay up into the cone shape and get it centered. Takes me about three, pulls up or three conings up to get clay of this size centered. Sometimes it only takes two. But I'm gonna cone this clay up three times before I lower it into a nice high centered mound. Now that this is centered, I'm gonna go ahead and open my ball of clay. So I'm gonna open my ball of clay and I'm gonna dip in using my two thumbs straight down. And I'm gonna stop right before the bottom of the form so I have a bottom and I don't touch my bat. I'm gonna spread my floor open, probably around two and a half inches. And then before I raise my walls up, I wanna lean in the ball of clay so it's a little straighter on the outside, not so bulbous. Before I make a big pull, I want to thin out the top just a little bit so I don't get a really thick rim that's hard to pull up on that initial pull. I'm gonna compress my top and now I'm gonna go in from the bottom and make my initial pull of clay. When I get up to the top of my form, I'm gonna ease up on the pressure so I can keep the rim thicker because I need to build in a flange for the lid. And if I thin out my rim too much, there won't be any clay left for me to create my, my flange. Now I'm gonna start to spread open and shape my teapot form so I'm kind of hooking my fingers under. You can see where I'm pressing against the wall of the clay. And I'm pushing out to create a really round form. Not all teapots need to be round. 
but this is kind of the classic teapot shape, which allows for a lot of volume for the liquid, so you can pour several cups of tea. I'm gonna get the water out of the interior, and the top looks a little wide to me, so I'm going to collar in the rim. So by collaring in, I sort of squeeze from the top, and I lean the clay in just a little bit to make the opening not so round. Now, this shape has flattened out a little bit because I've collared it, and that's okay. I'm gonna take my rib and round out so the So I've got my metal rib, not the serrated one, but the smooth rib, and I'm curving the rib within my hands, I'm bending it, and I'm forcing the clay into the profile of the, lid, of the, of the rib and rounding it out. This also scrapes all the liquid water off the surface, which makes your pot a lot stronger, less likely to collapse. I'm gonna dig in the edge of the rib so I can create a very distinct lip, and that'll help me put my flange into the inside of the, the rim. Okay, so I'm compressing again, just making sure that this is very centered. I'm gonna impart a little bit of moisture, and now I'm gonna take my wooden rib, the pointy side, and just like we do with our lidded jars, I'm going to split the rim in half and press down the flange. I'm going nice and slow while I do this on the wheel so as I don't collapse the flange. And I take my time and make sure that my movements are methodical and accurate. So now that I've compressed the interior and created the flange, I'm gonna soften this edge a little bit and I'm going to wipe the surface down from any water that might be collecting. I'm gonna look over the form, looks really good, looks really round, so I'm gonna undercut this, stop my wheel, and now I'm gonna take my interior measurement. I'm gonna use the outside of my calipers and I'm gonna place it right on the inside of the pot and I'm going to open up my calipers so they touch the outside edge of the flange or the gallery just to make sure that my fit is gonna be really good. So there it is. So be careful because your measurement is set. You don't wanna bump your calipers. I'm going to remove this teapot. Grab the bat. And to take a measurement, do I have enough clay? Usually I just hold a ball up in my calipers and I kind of visualize, can I spread enough clay out to fit inside my teapot? Since I'm just gonna be making a flat lid today that's gonna to rest on the flange, I think I have plenty of clay. I'm also gonna build in a knob right into this piece of clay, and I have enough. So while it's never fun to center a small piece of clay like this, oops, it's something we have to do when we're making lids. So I'm just getting my small ball of clay centered. Sometimes this is something where you have to really increase the speed. And I'm using a lot of fingertip, fancy fingertip work to get this clay centered because I can't necessarily muscle it like I normally do with a larger piece of clay. So I'm sort of feeding the clay towards the center to get it centered. Okay, so before I do anything else with this, here comes the calipers. 
and I'm gonna take a rough measurement to see how far I have to go. Looks like I have about half an inch on either side. So I'm doing good. To press the clay down so it fits in the measurement, I'm gonna press down, but just right on the outside of the center because I want to pre have enough clay to push up into a knob. So I'm gonna flatten out this clay right here. I'm gonna stop there, take a measurement again. All right, I'm very close. I'm only about a quarter of an inch away. So I'm gonna press down just a little further, spread it out just a little bit more. And if it's slightly bigger than your measurement, that's okay, because you can always trim it back. You can't add clay, but you can take it away. Now I'm right within my measurement and maybe just a hair bigger. So I have a pretty good thing going on here, but this knob looks a little sad. So I'm gonna come in with my fingertips and I'm gonna get underneath this knob and I'm gonna start to manipulate it. I'm gonna start to articulate it and get it nice and round. I want this to be a little sort of mini pot on the top of the lid. So the form has to be spot on. You have to have a really nice round form. And a really elegant undercut here. So this should feel really lovely in your fingers when you're lifting up the lid and you have your fingers wrapped around the knob. It should have a lot of purchase, okay? So that you can really reach underneath it and be able to lift that up, okay. I'm gonna slightly undercut that so it'll pop off the wheel. And then when these are dry, I'll trim them and assemble the pieces. So when I'm making spouts, I make a lot of spouts and I tend to throw them off the hump, which means that I get a roughly centered ball of clay and I throw at least two to three spouts per teapot. It's a lot like trying on shoes with an outfit. Some spouts just look better than others and you wanna have an assortment of them to choose from. So what I do is I get my ball of clay roughly centered and then I section off a chunk that's about the size of a tangerine for my spout, okay? And I open this ball of clay up, spread it open, and then I add a little water and I start to make a pull. When you're making spouts, you're gonna start off making closed up coned cylinders that you have to bring in in stages. They're generally always gonna be a little off center right at the rim and you'll find yourself continuously cutting off that ring to reveal the center clay underneath. Anytime you make a bottleneck or a spout for a teapot, you will have to cut off the ring as you start to collar in your form. So I have a thinner cylinder here, but I don't wanna make it too, too thin because as I collar it in, it'll start to wrinkle up. So I am gonna to start to bring this cylinder in. So I'm gonna squeeze on either side using my fingertips and I use a lot of water and I kind of push the clay up and I squeeze it in. As I squeeze it in, you'll see that my top starts to go off center again. That's okay, I'll just lop it off. As I collar my clay in, the other thing that begins to happen is your wall thickens up. Makes sense because you're closing in your form so the wall is getting thicker. I'm gonna stop here. Once again, I'm just gonna lop off the top. Okay, so I still have a ways to go. 
So I'm gonna dribble some water on the inside and I'm gonna do a little mini pull with my fingertips. Looks like I got a little spiral in the clay because it got thin right there. And that's okay, I can flatten that out. But if you get too thin, like I did, you can cut right there and start over and bring some clay up from the bottom and pull it into a spout. So I'm gonna to continue to squeeze this in, collar it in, pull the clay up, and I'm really kind of pushing in with my outside hand to make sure that my clay keeps going in and doesn't flare out. And now I'm gonna use my fingertips to squeeze on either side of the clay to create a narrow spout. And make sure that it has a nice direction when it pours. Okay, so since I've gone off center a little bit at the top, I still have to cut that off and clean it up. Oftentimes, I'll use my rib to scrape the surface free of all that slurry, which really weakens the form if you're having to throw something for a little while to get it right. And since I cut the edge of my spout, it's all ragged, so I have to smooth this out. When you're throwing a spout, you have to think about the interior and the dynamics of how the interior shape is going to affect the flow of the tea as it pours out the spout. Oftentimes, I will take my needle tool and make sure that the interior is nice and straight so that the tea as it pours out of the spout doesn't have any hiccups. It goes straight out the spout in the direction you want it to go in. Now, this is a pretty good spout. It's got a nice shape. The length of this is long enough to direct the pour of the tea, and it's nice and straight so that the tea will not flare out the top. It's just gonna pour directly the way you want it to. So I'm gonna undercut here. And before I cut this with my wire, I like to bend my spouts over just a little bit. So that way when I apply them to the pot, they have a nice bend and it tells the liquid to pour in that direction so you can control it. Cut this through, right where the groove is. Lift it off. Hole in the bottom. We'll carve that out later. And then make a few more. Thank you. Hey students, so I'm ready to trim my teapot now that it's leather hard. And I pop my um, lid off the bat. And as you can see, it drops down into the teapot, sitting in the gallery, sitting in the flange of the teapot, and it fits right in there. There's not a lot of wiggle room, nice tight fit. And so this form comes together, but I need to trim the other side, underside of this, and then I'll put on the spout and the handle. So I'm gonna set my lid aside, flip my teapot over, Get my teapot center. And I'm gonna use softer lugs to hold my teapot down because the flange at the rim of the teapot is very delicate. So I'm gonna use lighter lugs, softer lugs, so I don't dent in the flange and I'm able to keep that intact. So I'm going to trim the outside of my teapot 
And remember, when we are making teapots and whenever we are trimming any form, we always wanna trim the outside first and establish the outside diameter of the foot ring. So I'm gonna go along the form, trim away the extra clay, and I'm gonna establish a nice high foot and get rid of all that heavy weight at the bottom. Now I wanna have a foot, a width of a foot, that has a nice lift. I don't want it to be too wide and clunky looking. But on the other hand, I don't want it so narrow that the tea will topple and tip when it's sitting on the table. Having a tippy pot with a lot of hot liquid in it is never a good idea. So I have a foot ring that's wide enough to be stable, but narrow enough to not look clunky underneath the form. I'm removing the clay from the interior of the foot ring. Looks good. I'm gonna compress that foot with my fingertip. Gently remove the teapot form. And give it a little look. Looks good. Now we're gonna attach our spout and our handle. I've given myself here a little bit more room to be able to work, so I put a canvas cover board on top of my wheel here so I have more space to work. And this is the spout that I threw in the previous demonstration. And this is like kind of a little bit soft at the bottom. This area is cheddar cheese hard. So it's still flexible enough that I can bend it to suit the form of the teapot. Um, but not soaking wet anymore. I also threw this really long spout as far as a comparison for attaching different si types of spouts. So you can get an idea of how the scale of a spout really changes when you're looking at the form. So I would take a spout like this that has a slight bend in it that I intentionally gave it, and I would cut my spout at an angle that matches the bending curve that I gave it when I throw it. So if the spout bends this way, I wanna cut the spout and leave an extra little bulbous part at the bottom. I'm going to take my small little pottery knife, similar to the one that's in your toolkit, and cut away the extra clay And I wanna bevel the edges of the spout so it'll fit right up against the teapot form. Now, before I attach this, this is not the spout I'm going to use, but I wanted to give you an idea that you have to make a lot of spouts to match a form. This spout, in my opinion, looks really silly compared to this form. It's way too big. It's like a giant proboscis on a, on a plant of some kind or an insect, it's just too large. So I wouldn't use this one, but it's nice to see a couple spouts to get perspective. This spout on the other hand, since I've made so many of them, I know that this one is gonna be just the right kind of spout. So I'm gonna draw a line marking where it starts to bend over. And I'm gonna cut away the extra clay there. Bevel it as well so it fits up against the side of my form. And you can see that this is the interior of the spout. And now I'm going to place this up against my spout, I mean up against my teapot and I can see here that the proportions of this look way more correct. 
when I start to do my spout placement, and you usually wanna put the spout on before you put the handle on, really what we're thinking about is something called the golden ratio. The golden ratio is the level in which the spout lines up with the lid and eventually lines up with the top of the handle. And this is a really important factor when we're looking at forms. If I put the spout up really high, by the time the tea pours out the top, it will have spilled out the rim of the lid as well. If I put the spout too low, I can only fill my teapot up to here before the tea starts to dribble out the spout. So you have to think about the engineering of these forms and how they're gonna come together. I know that if I put my spout here, I'll be able to fill it to capacity, the teapot. I won't have it dribble out, but it's not so high that it'll spill out the top of the pot as well. So I'm gonna turn this towards me. I'm gonna center it on my, tea, my teapot form here. Make sure it's straight. And then I'll draw a line and mark where the placement is going to be. I also want to point out that there's always this bulbous part at the bottom of a teapot. This part of the funnel or the spout helps contain the fluid and initially direct it. I find that teapots that just have a funny little spout sticking off the side of them lack a a full feeling, they lack a design aspect, and they don't function as well. So I've marked this area, and I need to cut away a hole here. Some people like to drill holes to help strain tea. You can do that as long as they're a good diameter. But more often than not, we use just tea bags for tea. So I tend to cut a hole. The reason I cut a hole is because it makes cleaning out your teapot much easier. And also, I don't have to worry about glaze clogging up the little drill holes that I make. So I've cut a nice hole in my teapot, I've smoothed it out. I'm gonna score the surface really well always important to score deeply and to score with shadows. I'm going to score my spout now as well. And I'm scoring very well. Deep shadows, lots of little clay buggers. And I'm going to brush on some joining slip. This is slurry that I just keep and set aside from throwing. And now I'm gonna take my spout and I'm gonna join it to my teapot. I join my teapot spouts and I really wiggle, jiggle, and form them down. I take my finger and I blend and smooth the spout to the teapot. Make sure you take your lid off so you don't drop it. I have a lot of beginning students who are learning how to make teapots and join pieces together. And they wind up using their sponge and blending away all traces of the joint in this really over blended way. And while I appreciate the attention to craftsmanship, I think that every potter should consider, beginning potter can, should consider leaving this joint mark. Even though it's blended and fully attached, I still see that it's not fully blended into the form. These two separate components give a stylistic look to the teapot. Um, it really sort of pronounces, this is the spout and this is the form. And it also gives you a place to kind of glaze this area one color, maybe the body of a teapot another color. 
So it's a natural demarcation between the form and the spout. The shadow becomes really interesting. So I'm gonna put the lid on, look at my form and profile. I could see that this is coming together really nicely. So let's put on the handles. Okay, so I'm ready to put on the handle to my teapot and I've got a couple options here. The first option is a over the top handle and these are just really wonderful, whimsical handles that can go right over the top and add just, you know, just a really interesting note of whimsy to your pieces, another way to pour. Um, it frames the knob if you make a very interesting knob. Um, so it's actually kind of sculptural, architectural to make these over the top handles. You don't really see them as much. So I've got that option. And I also have the side handle option too that I can apply to this, this teapot and have it be pouring from the side, which is more traditional. Both of these I pulled earlier and they're cheddar cheese hard. So if I wanted to do the over the top handle, I would take the handle that I pulled and let stiffen up outside in the sun And I would cut an angle into the one side of the handle so it fits the angle of the pot here and the corresponding angle. So I usually tend to put the thicker side on the back and the slightly thinner side of the handle towards the front where the spout is. And then I would just attach those two. Listen, if you don't have enough space right here to do an over the top handle, then don't force it, don't try and make it happen. But I would simply just score, attach these really firmly, and then blend them, and then just make sure that my handle was nicely centered over the top of my teapot form. But I'm gonna use the side handle today. So I'm going to take this handle here, the side handle that I pulled earlier, I'm gonna cut away the extra clay. And I am gonna attach this to the outside, this side of my form here. And I have to determine where's the right handle placement for this. If I attach it too far to the side, it'll really interrupt the roundness of the form. If I attach it way too high, it'll feel really strange when I go to pour this. So I'm going to attach the handle just a hair lower than the lip. Usually I do it about a finger's width down from the lip of my pot. So I'm gonna center my spout and make sure that my handle is directly across from my spout. This is something that I always have to work on in my studio because I never wanna make an off-center handle, especially when I'm dealing with a spout and a knob. So my handle will be placed directly opposite my spout. And I'm gonna score the bottom and the top where the handle will be placed. Now I'm gonna score my handle. All right. And I'm gonna take my joining slit. I'm gonna really use a nice amount of slip there. I'm gonna slip my handle on either side. And now I'm going to wiggle, jiggle, and attach my handle to my teapot. I'm making sure that it's directly across from my spout. I'm gonna take the bottom and attach it to where I scored at the bottom as well. And I really wanna attach this so I see the slips really squish out on either side of the form. Take my sponge, wipe away any of the extra slip and blend in the attachment but once again, I don't wanna blend it into obliteration and have it lose all its character. I'm gonna take my sponge over the handle, round out the edge, 
oftentimes is a detail. I'll cut in a little point. And then I'll blend that. Kind of do that as a decorative flare. Make sure everything's well attached. Go back over the seam. Okay. Attach my lid. And there's my completed teapot. So my golden ratio is in place here. My handle lines up. The, the, the attachment of my handle lines up with the lid. And then it lines up with the tip of the spout. And it's really nicely proportioned. Thank you, students.